So hi everybody, thank you for inviting me. Um, so I will um, show you uh, my work on my uh, PhD uh, thesis on uh, sociology um, with my director and co-director from uh, Troyes and uh, Sorbonne University. Um, so. Okay, that's all. So we contextualized our work uh, with the increasing of the aging population uh, and where socially assistive robots uh, can appear to be a solution uh, to assist the work practices of care in the elderly uh, institutions. So at the present, there is still some gaps in the state of the art of the social assistive uh, robots. Uh, so the methodology uh, were not um, replicable sometimes. Uh, there is uh, still a lack of robustness uh, of the social robots that can influence the acceptance of these uh, tools. Um, the elderly uh, people are specific population and for um, example, like uh, health uh, issue can make it difficult to tailor tests or uh, in long term ways. Uh, and finally, there is still a, long, um, a lack of long-term um, study and in ecological um, environment. So our approach is a qualitative and empirical uh, study um, research for um, study these uh, impacts of the socially assistive robots on uh, elderly care. And for that, we co-design uh, social robots and uh, we introduce it into uh, two care facilities. So first a retirement home and then a daycare center. So we took the perspective of um, the work practices uh, and we use uh, video and uh, conversational uh, analysis for this uh, empirical data that we made uh, in situ. So to design the, um, uh, the use of the Chago robot, which is from PAL Robotics, um, we um, use a, co, um, a participative approach uh, to uh, uh, involve uh, the users, so elderly, but also uh, caregivers. And first of all, we have to identify the recurrent problem in the work practices. So at this time, um, I should have gone into, uh, directly into the facilities for immersion, but there was something called COVID that uh, appears. Uh, so uh, I, had, I had to adapt myself and I uh, use a, a methodology uh, by design, uh, created by designers um, that called cultural probes. So you just have to uh, make um, like handmade uh, activities kits and distribute it for two, uh, two participants. So in our case, our case it was uh, four caregivers. Um, and um, we found that very um, uh, positive uh, for this method uh, because we are aiming uh, to collecting uh, qualitative data in that period uh, and uh, we can maintain a regular contact uh, also with the participants. So the thematic analysis uh, highlights some recurrence problem that we, I will not uh, enter in details here. Uh, and after observing the work practices, when it was uh, opening again, we can construct uh, some several scenarios, eight, eight uh, in total. But we couldn't do every scenario, so we have to uh, prioritize. So pr for prioritizing, we use uh, focus groups with some elderly and uh, caregivers. Um, and this led us to uh, three main uh, situations, so three scenarios. So the first one was the information robot that is uh, able to start a conversation with some small talks, like you can uh, ask him the weather, um, news of the city, uh, plane activity of the environment, uh, the facility. Uh, the second one was a uh, welcome robot uh, at the entrance of the room and welcome and greets people it meets, but it also um, encourages the people uh, to move toward a snake table or a waiting room, for example, uh, to make the passage more fluid. And finally, we had the scenario with a group activity uh, that is uh, directed by the animator and uh, the, the robot can ask 
questions um, and can it be a medium uh, for a lotto game, for example? So we also organized another focus group, focus group to uh, develop the graphical interface. And all of these results uh, led us to um, uh, test uh, in realistic environments <laughs> uh, in a, a living lab. So this is a um, test that we, um, where we invite volunteers to um, come to the living lab uh, in Troyes. And um, the scenario was um, that the robot was placed at the entrance of the room um, and welcomed the participants and then conducting him to a place where he can ask some small talk to the machine. So the welcome robot and the information robot. So for the first session, the prototype was not stable and needed a control environment. Uh, so we conduct this test in an experimentation room uh, with the research team uh, just um, aside. Uh, and after improving the prototype, we were able to migrate the, the test in the realistic environment that is represented by an um, uh, experimental uh, apartment, uh, where the res research team was no longer uh, in contact with the participant, but we could uh, observe them with a one-way window. So, in short, all of these tests um, allowed us to iterate to improve the, the uh, prototype, but also to observe uh, the first uh, human-robot uh, interaction. However, uh, we didn't uh, focus on this reaction because we knew that um, a test environment and uh, ecological environment are two very different uh, situations. And so, after the test, well, it was time to introduce the robot in the real world. So we start with an EHPAD, so it's a retirement home in France. Um, during three months in the common room uh, of the um, retirement home, uh, and it was a static scenario with the um, information um, scenario. So we studied the form of engagement uh, of the user, so professional, residents, or even visitors that can pass uh, to go and visit uh, their relatives. Uh, so the robot is mainly, um, so uh, uh, our analysis show that uh, the robot uh, alone placed uh, in this uh, common room uh, that did not elicit strong and regular um, uh, interaction. So, like you, you say uh, in your research. So, um, with the exception of just one resident, um, so the, the robot was mainly seen as an object of curiosity because it didn't elicit some interaction with the robot, but there is um, interaction between resident about the robot that appears. So, it, it was like a, a curious thing in the room. Um, but, uh, but when it was a uh, direct interaction, so with the only person that um, uh, that uh, uh, go uh, the, with direct interaction um, with the robot, it was perce perceived as the interactional partner. But um, the robot was not uh, stable, so basically he repeated a lot of things. Uh, the same things, like the weather three times uh, uh, in the world. Uh, so, uh, in, in, in absence uh, sorry, of interactional relevance, uh, this uh, human-robot um, relationship did not last uh, over the time. So, unfortunately, my video didn't work, but uh, this is a sequence where uh, the elderly uh, come after one minute um, where, where the robot is repeating a lot of uh, things that is not relevant at all, not, risk, uh, not respons responding to the, the request of the, this older man. And um, he finished to, um, his interaction by saying you still have some way to go, some progress to make. Um, to, to the robot. And the robot continues this interaction, but the, the person just leave and uh, let the, 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 the robot alone, uh, talking alone. So after the, this uh, study, 
uh, we wonder if the introduction of this social robot could be more adapted to an, an organization that gives more latitude to the caregivers in their work practices. Uh, outside of nursing tasks, for example. And uh, this is why we repeated the introduction in the second uh, establishment. So it was a daycare center where the group was smaller, um, like five, six people maximum and two caregivers. And our preliminary uh, observations show that this work uh, organization uh, favors the use of the robot as a medium for an activity. So reading horoscope or playing lotto, like you can see on the picture. So it's like a transformation of uh, the activity for the benefits of um, an accompaniment. Uh, because uh, in the case of the lotto game, um, the professional just have to launch uh, the, the robot and the application uh, <coughs> start the lo lotto game. And before that, she has to pick up herself the, the balls, show them, repeat them, and uh, check if the, everybody had the, uh, check the participants' uh, grid. So it's a situated uh, acceptance in this uh, establishment that is stronger. And the elderly, with this mediation of the caregivers, who is a person of confidence, uh, they are more inclined to uh, interact even if the functioning is a uh, a bit balbutiant. So in this following uh, sequence, um, sorry. Okay. Oh. So the robot is repeating three times the same thing. And to make the scene more coherent, the caregiver just justify the robot's comportment <laughs> by explaining that he was repeating for each participant. So for the uh, work in progress, we just questioned this triadic interaction between elderly person, uh, professional and robot, and its contribution. Uh, to the situated acceptance uh, of the machine, so what arrangements are made in, the, in this uh, interaction. Uh, we have still <laughs> so many um, sequences to analyze, um, and this, uh, well, the conversational uh, analysis uh, allow us to more precisely um, observe this uh, engagement or disengagement. Um, and so in the case of the APAD, uh, we have seen that without external normalization, that this uh, kind of um, caregiver's uh, intervention, the, the interaction between the resident and the robot don't uh, last uh, over time. Um, and the person gradually uh, turns away from the, the technology. So um, this study aims to understand the interaction uh, between humans and social robots in order to contribute to a, a development of them um, more human-centered and also activity-oriented uh, in order to allow more sustainable uh, changes. So thank you for your attention.